Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm a member of the class of 2013 at MIT. Uh, a few weeks ago I uploaded a video on how to get into MIT, but once you get in, what do you do to graduate? That's what this video will explain. MIT has a set of requirements called the General Institute Requirements, which I'll go over first, and then after that it also has a few requirements uh, that you need to take regardless of what major you're in, but they are specific to your major. So let's get started. Uh, the biology requirement uh, can be built fulfilled by one of three classes, uh, 7012, 7013, or 7014. Uh, the difference between them is that 7012 uh, has a heavy emphasis on genetics, while 7013 has a heavier emphasis on development in neurobiology, uh, and 7014 focuses more on uh, microorganisms, uh, the biosphere, ecosystem, population growth, etc. Uh, these bio classes, 7012 is offered in the fall, and the others are offered in the spring. Um, they cover approximately two-thirds of the same material, and then the last third will be different based on, on what that is. So it's really good to just pick whichever one fits into your, into your schedule. The chemistry requirement can be fulfilled by three classes, any one of these three. 3091, 511-1, or 511-2. 3091 is an uh, introduction to solid-state chemistry. It's in the Department of Material Science, and it has a heavier emphasis on uh, solid-state chemistry. So crystals, band gaps, uh, things like that. But you still do cover a lot of the same chemistry as you do in the 511-1 and 511-2. 511-1 and 2 are both pure chemistry classes. They're offered in the Department of Chemistry. Uh, 1 is if you have less of a background of chemistry in high school. 511-2 uh, is more if you have uh, a AP experience, you feel very comfortable with your chemistry, and you want more of a challenge. You can see that 3091 is offered both semesters, fall and spring, as is 511-1, but 511-2 is only offered in the fall. Both chemistry and biology are very difficult to pass out of. Uh, what I mean by that is when you come to MIT, you're able to take uh, advanced standing exams, or ASEs. The advanced standing exams for biology and chemistry every year have the lowest pass rates of any of them. And the reason for that is because the biology and chemistry you'll do here, especially the biology, is very different than what you might have done in high school. Um, in high school, biology usually is a lot of memorization, uh, that's basically it. Uh, here at MIT, you do a lot of problem solving around biology, and uh, it's hard to describe, but when you take it, you'll see what I mean. Uh, so, then we move on to the math requirement. Uh, you're required to take single variable and multivariable calculus. Um, you can pass out of the single variable calculus requirement by getting a 4 or a 5 uh, on the BC exam. So in high school, you can, there's the AB exam, which covers differential calculus and some integral calculus. Then there's the BC exam, which covers differential calculus, integral calculus, and sequences in series. So if you get a 4 or 5 on the BC, you can just completely skip. This is fulfilled, and you can move on to multivariable. If you have not done this, uh, you can take 1801, which is the standard multivari uh, single variable calculus. It's offered both semesters, fall and spring. Uh, you can take 1801A, and this is recommended if you've gotten a 4 or a 5 on the AB exam. Uh, 1801A is a full year sequence that goes from the fall uh, through IAP, which is independent, activi independent activities period in January, and into the spring. Um, it involves, I think, a six-week review of single variable calculus before you move on and you cover multivariable calculus, all of 1802. Uh, then there's 1801.4, which is a very proof-based version of single variable calculus. And this is only offered in the fall, and in the spring you typically take 1802.4, which is the proof-based version of multivariable calculus. But the standard class that most students here take is 1801. Uh, and then multivariable calculus can be uh, satisfied by 1802, Again, offer fall or spring, a uh, traditional course that most MIT students take. Uh, 1802A, if you're continuing from the spring. 1802 which is only offered in the fall and has a more theoretical, pure math uh, emphasis in the class. And 1802 which again continues from the spring. Uh, physics requirement. You have two physics classes that you need to take here. Uh, one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism. The mechanics requirement can be fulfilled if you get a 5 on both parts 1 and 2 of the Physics C exam. Otherwise, you have to take 801. You can also take the Advanced Standing exam again and get out of uh, any of these, these requirements. Um, so, 
801 is the traditional physics mechanics class. It's offered in the teal format, uh, which means that you're sitting in groups around the, in the big, big classroom. You're in groups. You do uh, problem solving together. You go up to the, uh, you each have your own whiteboard and you do problems there. Um, you have clicker questions, etc. Uh, it's the standard, standard uh, mechanics physics one class at MIT. 801L is if you're not feeling very comfortable with your physics background and you want to spend more time on learning how to solve problems. Uh, this continues into IAP, uh, but covers the same material as 801. 8012 is if you're feeling very comfortable with your physics background and you want a very uh, very rigorous class, a more challenging class. Um, this is only offered in the fall as 801L and 801. Uh, and if you, unfortunately, if you have the misfortune to fail uh, 801 or 801L or 8012, you take 8011, which is only offered in the spring. Um, I mentioned that 801 was teal format, the rest are regular lecture format. Physics 2 is electricity magnetism. The standard class is 802, offered both fall and spring. If you want more of a challenge, you're you know, very comfortable with your physics background in this area of physics, then take 8022, offered both fall and spring. And if you have the misfortune of failing either of those, which is not uncommon, by the way, to fail some of these GIRs, um, then you'll take 8021, which is offered in the fall. So those are the, the general institute requirements that every student needs to take these, and it's very specified. This is the only set of classes that will satisfy each of these requirements. Um, now we move into some of the others. So some of the other GRs, you have the communications requirement. To fulfill the communications requirement, you have to take two classes that are designated as CIH, which means communicas communications intensive. Um, CIH classes uh, require, I believe, 20 or more pages of writing throughout the semester, and is usually a type of presentation also. Uh, these will not be in your major, necessarily. Uh, then you need two CIM classes. Two CIMs, the M in CIM stands for major. So you're going to take two classes that are in your major that require you to write you know, 20 more pages. And these are clearly designated in the course catalog. Uh, you need, traditionally, what students do is they take one CIH their freshman year, one CIH their sophomore year, and then one CIM both their junior year and then their senior year. And then you fulfill the requirement. There's also a humanities, arts, and social sciences requirement, HAS for short. Uh, you're required to take eight HAS classes here, uh, of which one must be a HAS H, one is a HAS A, and one must be a HAS S. This just means you need to take one HAS that is in the humanities area, one HAS that's in the arts area, and one HAS that is in the social sciences area. Furthermore, you need a concentration. Um, a concentration is, is a collective, a collection of three or four HAS class classes that form a coherent area of study. Uh, education is an example, economics, political science. Um, these, uh, you know, you don't have to add this onto the eight. The eight includes all of these. Uh, so next you need to take uh, two REST subjects, which stands for Restrictive Elective in Science and Technology. Again, these are just classes that are designated as being REST. Uh, to give some examples, Waves and Vibrations, 803. Uh, 1806, 1803, uh, which is linear algebra and differential equations. Uh, a lot of the different technical uh, course uh, courses of study have rest subjects that you can take that are introductory. Um, you're required to take one lab uh, while you're here. This will fill your lab requirement. The lab that you take is in almost all cases in the area of major. A few exceptions, but in general, you'll be taking a lab in your course of study. Then you need eight PE points, eight physical education points. Uh, you can take, we have PE classes here, there are four quarters, uh, two quarters, oh sorry, there are five quarters, two in the fall, two in the spring, and one during IAP. Technically, I know they're not quarters, but that's what they're called. Um, one class gives you two PE points. If you do a varsity sport, you get four PE points per year of doing that sport. And finally, if you're involved in ROTC, then you get two points per year, but you can earn no more than four points if you're involved in this. And finally, there is the swim test requirement. Uh, basically, you need to pass a swim test, or you need to uh, satisfactorily complete a swim course, which is a PE course. Um, and once you complete all that, you're good. Uh, this is what you need if to graduate from MIT.